Welcome everybody, this is the item talk for the patch notes, and there's a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about them in the sections of this. Starter items, actives, boots, then the physical items, the magical items, and finally the defensive items that both can draw from, and that'll be everything. So it's quite a bit to talk about, so let's just get going already. So first up is the starter items, and let's go ahead and look at that. So starter items here, all of them can be covered as a physical god, so... Because, uh, let's see here, the vampiric shroud, no changes. First one we should probably talk about is the Death Toll. So Death Toll, they took away the attack speed on it, but they gave it plus one HP uh, per hit. So uh, that's a good trade-off, right? I, I guess. I guess it is. Um, the attack speed's not a big number, but it, it's, a heft, it's a bit of a loss there, not having attack speed in another item. And then you got Mark of the Vanguard, which gained another 50 health to it, which can be very useful. That's another like basic attacker ability at the start of the game that can be helpful. I don't know if I'd take it over other items, though, for sure. Watcher's Gift is very important for supports, of course, and that is you no longer get the HP 5 or MP 5, but you do get it sort of as a passive. So what happens is within 60 range of minions getting killed, you gain plus 4 gold, and you also get 10 health and 5 mana. So you want to be in the lane quite a bit to get that. And what's great is it doesn't matter who gets the killing blow, minions or gods. doesn't matter you get that bonus gold, so... That's pretty nice there. What this does is it's really trying to make supports be more in lane than Romy, from what I can tell with this. Just saying, you gotta be within range, you don't have to get the last hits though. I mean, you don't need your hunter to get the last hits though, so that's good. And it's just really enforcing just you sticking around. You also notice that from when we talk about boots with Midas boots being gone, they really want the, the support to just stick around. And then the new starter item, which is only for uh, physical gods, is the blue stone pendant. 15 physical power, 90 health, 5 MP5. And here's the interesting thing, is restoring 4% of your missing mana every 5 seconds. So, just look at AMC as an example really quick. Close that a second. Let's say at level 1, you got, where is it, 270 mana. Well, 4% of that is 10.8 mana. So... If you used all your mana, you will get back 10.8 mana over 5 seconds. And that's not counting the 5 MP5 as well. So I guess you're going to get about like well, 15 over 5 seconds then. And that's not a lot, but it's enough that I guess if you save up, you can do... Well, with Amazon Cobb, he'd be good clear just with his bees, so that'll be good for him. But with other gods, if you want to maybe do like a burst to go for an enemy or something like that, you have to consider it. The blue stone's going to help you out as a mini blue buff, but... It's not going to let you just go crazy with your uh, clear, so it's going to be interesting to see how people conserve their mana and use this item to their advantage. Okay, so now it's time for the actives. There's two new ones. Achilles Spear is the first one we're talking about. That is, it gives you plus 30% attack speed, 35% lifesteal, and 30 movement speed for 5 seconds. And you also take an additional 30% additional damage from all sources. That means minions, gods, whatever hits you, you're going to take more damage from them. So this is a very... You are really going for the kill with this item. You are you are committing. You're going to kill somebody. You might get killed doing it, but you really want to kill someone. Five seconds is the length of Baka's ultimate. 5.5 seconds is the length of Kali's ultimate. So you see, there's some ultimates that can take advantage of this item, and they're going to go really crazy with it, but there's a chance of getting killed. Kali probably is going to use it very well, because, well, she's going to be uh, not killable during the five seconds. So that'll be probably really useful for her. So you're going to want to CC her if she tries that. But on the other side, there is the Shield of Underworld, which is defensive. And that, what it does is reflects 40% of all damage you take before mitigations for the next 5 seconds to the owner as magical damage. So, also you can't be life-stealed while this is on. So, you can put this on top of the Achilles Spear to bounce back some of the damage you're taking, and that'd be pretty good there. It'd be interesting to do them together just as an experiment, and it might work, especially for someone like Baka, who will be taking damage while he's ulting. Of course, he'll be healing back quite a bit, but uh, they'll be doing really well there, so that's good there. So it might be interesting to just experiment with those two items for Baka. Kali probably doesn't need the Underworld. We're just seeing other gods try these out when they try to burst, especially with, say, like a hunter. Like with the uh, shield of the Underworld as a hunter boxing another hunter, they can't lifesteal off you, so you can just kill them and lifesteal, and you'll probably do kind of well there. Also with Assassins or maybe Warriors, just anyone who has lifesteal, they're not going to have an easy time dealing with you. That'll be pretty good. Heck, even uses against Anubis with all that lifesteal he's got. He can't take anything from you. He's doing his ultimate or his other things to you, and he's just getting hurt, and you'll just... You know, well, you'll still get hurt too, but 40% less, and you'll maybe kill him because he can't lifesteal out of it. So that'll be pretty nice there. Other active changes is... 
Aegis, so Greater Aegis, uh, Greater Aegis no longer can be castable under CC. So you have to do a preemptive cast with that one. And then Aegis Pendant now uh, no longer gives you defense after Aegis has run out. That's what they've done to those two, so they've both been given a bit of a nerf there. So there you go. Now Beads, Beads here, now it's only 3 seconds instead of 5 seconds redu reduction on cooldown when you use it. And that's not too big, but it has been useful in the past. Some people use the Greater Purification to get things off cooldown sooner so they can do it and do some damage. And so it's an aggressive way to use it, and now that's gone. Also, if you have your escape almost ready and you do this, you can't get CC and then you can just jump away or whatever. And if it's in 5 seconds instead of 3 seconds, that's going to hurt a little bit. And then two actives were removed. It's, uh, let's see, Spike Shell and Protected Recall. Protected Recall's gone. Teleport to Gods is still in the game for some reason. Protected Recall is really mostly a trolley item. And then Spike Shell, people just didn't use it. They just did not use it. Shell Absorption is still around, though, so there you go with that. Now let's talk about the boots. Okay, so we'll be talking about the physical boots first, and basically they're just cheaper across the board. Holy crap with that. And also they're all just streamlined into these four at the end instead of having the branch off. As you can see, Midas Boots is gone, which really hurts supports a lot. Holy crap, does that hurt them? Gonna make them want to stay in lane more, and uh, ouch at that. Now let's talk about the main ones. Warrior Tabi lost pen but gained power. Ninja Tabi lost cooldown but gained attack speed. And uh, I can't remember if it gained the power. I can't remember offhand right now what else was on the Ninja Tabi. Now as you can see they're cheaper so you can pr open with these a lot faster. And that's why they took away stats from them. Now Reinforced Greaves has lost all of its protections. Now it gives a little bit of power, some health, crowd control reduction still there, and then movement speed so that's not bad there. And here's the interesting one is Talaria Boots. Gives you some power, 18 percent movement speed but when out of combat 28 movement speed and plus 25 hp 5 i'm looking forward to seeing this on jungler seeing how well it works for them and on the support for roaming like they might want to try to roam faster with this so it'd be interesting to see if they take this up instead of the other boots then the question is what about the other three roles uh, as they are at the moment which is solo mid and uh, the hunter will adc because if magic is gonna be that too so Solo, maybe it's a thought, but I don't know how good it'll be. Like, you, you'll you be attacking between waves, and the waves will take long enough that you could be out of combat to take advantage of the passive. Mid, maybe as well, although you, you move around a little bit for the mids and other things, so I don't know about that. And then Hunter, I don't know, you're constantly fighting. I don't know if that'll work out. But jungler and support, I think, will be the most interesting ones to see the Talaria boots on. On the magical side of the boots, we have Traveler's Shoes, which is basically the magical version. It's just... Uh, at this price, same thing for reinforced shoes, it's just basically the magical version at this price. Like, they're a different price from their uh, physical side. Now, the magical shoes over here. Shoes of Magi lost pen, gained power. Shoes of Focus lost mana, I don't remember how much power it had. And it kept its cooldown. So this is the only cooldown shoes or boots in the game is this one right here. So mages still have cooldown that they can take advantage of. And in general, the idea really is, is that they... They're shaking up the support by taking away uh, Midas, and also what they're changing the Watcher's Gift, but also uh, just shaking up a little bit on, well, cooldown and pen. Like, you can't get pen and cooldown as easily at the start as you used to. So it's going to be interesting to see how people build because of that. They're really trying to shake up builds and standard builds. That's really the idea there. Now for the meat. We're going to talk about the physical items and the magical items, and then defensive items that, are, that can be used by both sides. So the physical gods have a lot of items changed. So we're gonna, there's a lot to go here. So first up is Aussie. Drain Blade is no longer there anymore. Aussie's a bit cheaper. Light Blade has 15% attack speed to compensate for that. And so you, it takes a while to get to the Aussie now. Just because you don't have a Draining Blade to get on your way there. So uh, when you get this or you want to get one of the other ones, it's up to you. And then over here, Quinn's Eye has been nerfed from 25% attack speed to 15% and also lost 5% down to 4% on its passive. Now... It's still going to be a good item, probably still really good on the hyper carries. On the hunters, we'll probably still see them use it in their builds. The Zabacorn, the Unicorn, the other corns, Candy Corn, all those builds, we'll probably still see it on them, maybe. We'll really see, they're probably going to do their evaluation of min-maxing, see what they feel will still work. Well, is it better to do this or go for the crits? Who knows? But we'll see what builds get affected by that. I still think it'll be good on the really attack speed heavy gods, but maybe it's not required on every god. I don't know. Quinn size has been the king of the land for a while. I don't know if this is enough to change it. Some people think it's the death of Quinn size. I don't think it is. It's still quite useful 
just a little bit slower. Moving down to Bloodforge, since it's on the list, Bloodforge has been changed. It is cheaper now, and its lifesteal has been changed. It doesn't have as many stacks on it. So, overall, here's what Bloodforge happened. Bloodforge used to give you 30 lifesteal when you had full stacks on it. Now it's only 24, but it is cheaper. And according to Dry Bear, it will be a better alternative over Devo Gloves until Devo Gloves gets f fully stacked. So, that means just get Devo Gloves. But he's saying it's an alternative to try to start out with this instead of this, is what he's saying. And I'd rather just go for the Devo Gloves. I feel like you always got to fight for the mid to late game. The early game can change things. But you've seen games that I've been in where early game can be negated pretty well. So I'd rather go for the longer fight. So Devo Gloves for sure. Now the Aki Evil got the same treatment as Asia where it goes to tier 2. And this item now has pen on it. So that actually makes it a little bit better. Seeing as how it steals power, now it also gives you pen. So that's going to be a little more biting when fighting physical guns. That's pretty nice there. And I look forward to trying it out. It is pretty cheap, so you can go for a pretty cheap early build with this item and see what you can do with it. Now on the other side with Charge Bow and Odysseus Bow, what's nice about this is now it's more reliable. Every fourth hit now procs. Instead of it being 25% chance and never, ever, ever casting, now it's uh, every fourth hit. That's pretty good. Makes it more reliable. Interested to see how it'll do with clearing. And this will be worth experimenting for dang sure. Moving over to a different item, let's go ahead and take a look at the Hydras. So, no change over here. All the changes here are the Hydras. Hydra Star and Hydra's Lament. They are now cheaper, way cheaper. They do less damage, but they uh, come up sooner on the passive. But if you miss your basic attack after doing ability, then you miss the opportunity damage, which is a little not so good. So, Hydras theoretically could be better could be worse i'm not really sure i think if you're highly skilled maybe it's better because you can do things more often but for a guy that relies on big burst that the more expensive hydra was probably better so you usually see this on loki using hydra's lament so having a smaller burst on loki probably not better for him so for a loki player probably not as good for other players probably maybe as useful i'm not sure just got to evaluate it some more but i kind of don't like it I don't like it. Personally, though, that's that's me. Now, Frostbound Hammer. So, you know, everyone used Heavy Hammer because it gave you 25 uh, movement speed nerf. I mean, debuff to an opponent when you hit them with it. Frostbound Hammer does 30%, which isn't that much, but now it does a 15% reduction to enemies' attack speed. They did take away some health off of it because they did that, but still, 15% reduction to attack speed is pretty significant. That'll be good at slowing down your opponent when you're boxing them or doing whatever to them. And that could be really good, so they've come up with something to give you as an alternative to just staying at Heavy Hammer to go for the full things. So that's nice there. And then we have the Crusher, which is in stats comparable to the Brawler's Beatstick. So for builds that use Brawler's Beatstick, you could consider using the Crusher. And what the Crusher does is it just lets you destroy towers a bit better. Basically, when you're hitting a tower, it gives you a stack. And it goes up to 5 stacks. And that stack increases your attack speed by 6% and movement speed by 3%. So you're just... Hitting that tower faster, and you're being able to move around a little bit faster as well. So you can dodge opponents and hit the tower, or just get out of there quicker after you've destroyed a tower. So this would be a really good backdooring item. And maybe as an early, just take down a tower if you really want to be ballsy about it. In a solo lane, or maybe even the duo lane, I'm not sure. But it might be something to consider. But definitely, Baka can take advantage of this. Apollo will take advantage of this. Most of the hunters might want to do this instead of Brawler's Reach Stick if they don't want to box. Instead, just go for objectives. Then they can always sell this and go for the Brawler's Beast stick later on. Since all so many items are cheaper, you could consider building in one way, then building in another direction later on. And, and of course, Loki. So just backdoor gods will do really good with this item for dang sure. And maybe hunters will be good with it, who knows. Or if you want to go for just killing towers early, you might want to get this. And then switch it out later on. That's something to consider. Death of Brawler's strategy. Seeing as how so many items are cheaper... There's some interesting ideas in just buildings for one direction, and then when the match has changed the tempo, you switch to a different kind of build, just because items are a little bit cheaper in the game at this point. And seal. Okay, so what's happened here is Anseal, it used to be you only got cooldown from your stacks, now they've given you 8% when you buy it and you get the rest from stacks. And you get another 8% from the stacks. So it used to be 15%, now it's 16%. Where's it 20%? I'm pretty sure it was 15%. Can't remember offhand right now. Pretty sure you got 15 from stacks, so now it's 16%. So it is a buff, so nice there. Runic Shield now 
Uh, I think it just gave you more protection when you got hit with an ability in the old aura. Now this aura does is when you're around enemies, uh, what it does is it reduces their magical power by 50. So not so great against physicals, of course, but against magicals, this could be very significant. This would be really good as a solo anti-mage item for sure, or even in a mid if you're playing a, a physical god, this could be very useful. So it's interesting to see that change there. And heck, even in a big team fight, that'll be very good against fighting just a lot of magical damage. Lastly, for the physicals, is Shield of Regrowth. Now, it's not in the patch notes, but I remember this change was coming. I don't know why it's not mentioned, but here it is, and that is the new passive. The old passive was, we got hit with the ability, your HP 5 went up by 100%. The new one is, when you heal yourself, which a large number of the roster can do as a physical god, you gain 25% movement speed uh, for 2 seconds. That's pretty good, so it's good for running away or chasing down. That'll be very useful, you can only do it every 10 seconds. And yeah... This could be very useful. Like, basically half the physical roster can heal themselves in some way. So that would be useful as heck for them. Oh, got Hercules with this. Be able to get away. Chalk with this. Closing it or getting away. Baka. Just all the gods who can heal themselves could be very effective with this thing. But remember, it's from abilities. You can't do it from lifesteal. And that's all the physical stuff. So now it's time for the magical items. Okay, magical items. First up is the Doom Orb, which is now a tier 2. And it's actually 100 gold cheaper. So you want it? There you go. There you go. Okay, so this tree has some changes. Oh, man. Okay, so first up is the Dynasty Plate Helm. Now it's a Tier 2. And uh, that's it. Okay, so Celestial Legion Helm. I've got a problem with this one. So what this does is when you get hit with the basic attack, the damage doesn't apply. Right? And for the next 3 seconds, you also gain 40 magical power. And this passive won't happen again for 15 seconds. So there you go. That's it. That's what happens. And so, you eat the first critical strike, and you don't get hurt by it, and you can fight back, and maybe you can kill him, who knows. But those next hits that are coming your way will crit you, and you will probably die. Now, the old passive was, it was every, like, three, or maybe it was four seconds, when you get hit with a crit, you couldn't get hit with another one. You get hit with a crit, you can't get hit for three or four seconds with another crit. You can still take basic acts, but not crit damage. This was a crit, anti-crit item, very good for that, so... With the old passive, it was very hard to kill you with just crit damage. They had to use Quinn Size to take you out pretty well. With this one, you're a bit more aggressive with it, but the first crit doesn't hit you, but the next three or four crits will hit you, and they will kill you. So that's my problem with this change is it was a very not very well used item, and now I don't see it being used at all. That's really my feelings on this item. But then we got the new item, the Lotus Crown. Now, the Lotus Crown is a healer item for damn sure. Every time you heal... Other gods, they gain an additional 20 magical and physical protection for 5 seconds. I believe healing yourself counts with this as well, so you can make yourself very hard to kill as well. But give this to Chunga, give this to Hell, give this to Ra, just give it to a healer. Heal your teammates, and they're going to be harder to kill. Now, will this work on Hades himself? That's what I'm wondering. If Hades can use this on himself with his heal, he can be pretty damn aggressive with that thing. Dude, your 1-3 combo, heal yourself, you got... About 20 protection on both sides of that, so that'd be really nice to open up, and then you do your ultimate for those 5 seconds, so you have some additional protection. That is a guess, I am not sure if it actually works on him, I assume it does at the moment, and I have to test that out. But that would be very interesting to use on him. But just healers in general are going to make a team fight very hard to deal with. And just think about like a support healer with this, and if they got the, the solve and the other item, which we'll talk about later, if they got that and all that protection for the team, that'll be nuts. Very nuts. So, lifesteal items. Pythagorean's piece is now over here on the Bancroft side, and it has cooldown. Still not going to use it. Okay, over here, Polynomicon. Polynomicon now uh, it has an extra 10% on magical power contribution to the next basic attack. You can cast it. You can do it sooner instead of forcing it every 3 seconds, and it lasts 8 seconds before you have to use it. Now, if you miss your basic attack, you well, you can't use it. I mean, well, if you miss your basic attack, it doesn't do anything because it missed. You can't. You didn't hit anybody. That power is wasted. You have to wait for your next ability cast to get another Ponomicon hit. Now I feel less e about this than I do for the Hydra's Lament, just because mages usually are able to hold you down for a position to do the basic attack. Scylla with her wolf tickles will get you. Zeus is usually pretty uh, accurate. Uh, Kronos he stuns you and then hits you with a basic attack. You see, gods who might really use this as far as mages go, will probably have a better time landing their basic attacks because of the CC they have, so I'm not as apprehensive about this as I am about the Hydras. 
And then finally, gold, Voidstone is 100 gold cheaper, so yay for me, because I like that item. Now it's time for the general defensive items. First up that needs to talk about is the blade. So Wing Blade, 50 HP has been taken off of it, that's it. Witch Blade, though, has lost the movement speed buff to it. Oh, that hurts a lot of solo gods. That hurts, well, that hurts hunters. That hurts, hurts a lot of gods that like the Witch Blade. Because the movement speed was really nice. Give this to Baka, he's crazy. Give this to Osiris, he's crazy. Give this to Chuck, he's crazy. Give this to some of the hunters, they're crazy. So that movement speed does hurt a little bit. It'll still probably be useful as a counter item, but it does hurt losing that movement speed. So woof. But we'll probably still see people building this item. It just won't be as well effective as it used to be because of course it got nerfed, obviously. Here's a big one. Spirit Robe and Magi's Blessing. Magi's Blessing no longer has CC reduction. Now it's just that immunity for the one second after the bubble gets burst. Which, Magi's Blessing was a very core item. So they're doing this to give you a choice between Magi's Blessing and High Diversion and Spirit Robe. And Spirit Robe is amazing. Spirit Robe now is 40 protection on magical and physical. And you get 15% cooldown on that. Not only that, but when you get hit with a CC, a hard CC... For three seconds, you take 15% less damage. You get 15% damage mitigation. Every 10 seconds, you can do this. This is going to be great on tankier gods. Like, even if you are a squishy guy, you want to have one defensive item, this might be the one you go for, because you might get caught. Although, actually, Magic's Blessing might still be good for you, because usually when you're a squishy guy, you expect to get caught with one CC, and then you just get the hell out of there. While Spirit Robe, though, if you think it'll be in the nitty-gritty, maybe it'll be good for you. That Spirit Robe just looks nice. Very nice. Very much worth considering. Now I think all three are worth picking up depending on what gods you're playing. And that's good. Certain tanky gods will want the Heride of Urchin. Certain tanky gods want the Spirit Robe. And certain tanky gods will want the Magi's Blessing. Squishiers will probably still want the Magi's Blessing because of CC if they don't have beads or if their beads is used up. And so there's just a lot of good choices here. So this is a very strong tree. And it's time for the last one. Sovereignty nerfed. Yeah. Sovereignty lost some... Protection and its aura is not as good. It doesn't give you physical and magical protection anymore. It just gives you 20 magical and 25 HP 5. So it lost that be all choice to it. Of course, it did lose a lot of gold uh, to, to buy it though, so it is cheaper. And then the on the other side is the magical version of the sovereignty, and that is the Heartward Amulet. It gives you HP, gives you magic protection, lets you have an aura of physical protection, and 20 MP 5. So what a lot of supports are talking about, even the pro supports are saying, you're going to get both of these items. So you're going to get Sovereignty and the Heartward Amulet, because they're basically Sovereignty, but you got to get them both. And they're cheap enough that you can afford to get them both as a support. And so that's going to be your core build. You're going to go ahead and get the Watchers, you're going to get a boot of some kind, you're going to get these two. And there's your first four items. When it used to be, your first three items were Watchers, Midas, and Sovereignty guaranteed. So it's going to be interesting to see... If people try to shake up the meta, but right now it looks like the pro belief has been these two items. And I don't know if that's changed over the last few days or not, but last time I read their opinions, that's what it was. But who knows? Maybe their opinions will change as it goes on. This is the first day of Season 2, though they've been playing in the PTS, so their opinion probably is weighted pretty well already. But that's what you really got to think about is, what do you want to do? So let's just summarize everything in general. In general, a lot of items got cheaper, especially the boots. And of course, you can see Saab is cheaper and a couple other ones cheaper, like the Hydra's Lament and stuff like that. And the idea to the cheaperness is, one, it because they took away stats, it makes you want to vary up your build a little bit more. But also, it lets you get to later builds sooner. Like, you can get to 4th, 5th, and 6th item a lot faster because everything is so much cheaper on the starting end of things. So it's going to be interesting to see how that's affected, of course, also with the blue buff gone on the on the long lane, but also you get the uh, the soul stone for the physical gods. It's going to be interesting to see how clear is handled there, how the support's going to handle that situation, if the meta will change at all as well. Like, will we see the duo somewhere else? Will they go over to the short lane and Solo has to deal with the long lane? What's going to happen? Well, there's going to be a lot of upheaval over the next two months or so to see what happens to the meta and these items will be affecting that as well, not just the way the master is set up. So it's going to be very interesting just to see how everything happens and how everything changes in the future. But that right there is the item portion of the patch video. So there you go. That was a lot to go over. Holy crap. And you can also put your opinions in the comments. Of course, these are my opinions. These are my initial opinions. 
I could be wrong about a lot of things. I could be right about everything. Who knows? But this is my initial reaction to everything at the moment, and we'll see how it is affected going in and playing it in Arena and Conquest, and just playing the game. The real way to know it all is just to play it, and we'll see that soon enough in the future. But for now, that right there is the items video. I had fun of it from watching you learn something, and that's what's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.